It's amazing to think that a blocked toilet was the first cause. For the five years that we have lived in this home, there have been no plumbing problems at all. However, around four months ago, the master bedroom toilet suddenly became clogged. Things became so terrible that we had to start using our kids' bedrooms as toilets. Hi there. My age is 35. My spouse is 34. My wife stays at home with our three children. I've been putting off hiring a plumber despite my wife's persistent pressure since I planned to tackle the problem over the weekend. I completed some plumbing work on a Saturday, so I have some familiarity with that. I found time to buy a drain auger at Home Depot. I thought I fixed the problem, but after two days, the toilet started clogging up again. My wife got frustrated that she couldn't use the bathroom in our room and went off on me to get a plumber. Because she was tired of using our kid's bathroom, I decided to call a plumber that I normally use to service my two-renter property when I'm having plumbing issues. On the day the plumber came to my house, my wife was visiting her mom and staying over with my kids till the evening. So I used that opportunity to get the plumber to come over and fix the clogging issue without interruptions. I was hoping to surprise her so I didn't tell her the plumber was coming. Lately, I have been doing everything I can to make her happy. Because over the past few months, she has been really moody and short-tempered. We have the keyless entry door, so I let the plumber in remotely, using my phone to unlock the door. He called me a few hours later, telling me that he found some clogging on my sewer pipe. That was caused by condoms getting in intersections of pipe or any snag or object that might be already in the pipe. I didn't believe him till he showed me some drainage camera footage. I still had my doubts because the footage didn't seem that clear to me. It was not believable because I have never used a condom for a while. Not since my college days when I was fooling around with my now wife. After we had our third child, I decided to get a vasectomy. When my wife returned home that day, she said, It was already late and I wanted to go to bed early because I had a presentation at work the following day. My wife brought some food for me and for the neighbor and his two kids. I thought it would cheer my wife up to talk about what the plumber found that was clogging our sewer. We had the same sense of humor, so I thought that she would laugh her ass off. However, she didn't. When I told her that the plumber found some condoms in the toilet, she didn't react as I would have expected. She tensed up a bit and her face was blushing. Totally unexpected reaction. I am familiar with her mannerism and I thought her reaction didn't seem appropriate. I have seen that reaction before and I know my wife well enough to feel like something wasn't right. She immediately tried to change the topic. I was initially uncertain about how to interpret her response. Perhaps this was just one of her mood swings, I reasoned. For the last four months, she had been irritable. I was unable to ascertain why. I feel like I have been treading carefully, even though I have been doing everything in my power to make her happy. Since my three children are already enrolled in school, my wife, a stay-at-home mother, has been searching for something to occupy her time. I assumed that it must be part of the reason for her mood swings. I thought she had depression. Sure enough, she was diagnosed with depression. She was thinking about getting back into the workforce about a year ago because she was feeling depressed, and we thought it was because our kids are getting older and she was looking for something to keep her busy. Six months later, she changed her mind. She did a complete 180 and changed her mind about joining the workforce. Coincidentally, around the period when she changed her mind about joining the workforce, I noticed that our intimate life started to taper off. She started acting differently. She was doing a lot more chores around the house, changing the sheets often, less interactive. She was visiting her friends and family a lot less. The only time she leaves the house is to do shopping or go to the gym. She lost about 30 pounds during this period. Her wardrobe also changed significantly during this period. She started wearing lingerie. Short shorts on several occasions. She wouldn't wear underwear outside the house, and especially when she was visiting the neighbors. It makes sense to me now what she was doing. Now I know she was seducing the neighbor, and that was when the affair started. But back then, I was clueless. After the plumbing incident, I didn't know what to make of her reaction. And I made a mental note so as to keep my eyes on her. When I started suspecting that she was up to something... That was when I started suspecting things that I would normally not suspect before. When we moved into my home five years ago, it was a brand new house in a new subdivision. A year later, my neighbor moved in. Let's call the neighbor Cody. Cody moved in with his soon-to-be ex-wife and two children, a 19-year-old boy and a 17-year-old girl. Cody was 42 years old, so he's seven years older than me, and we shared the same hobby, so we got along well. We hang out all the time and me and my wife grew fond of Cody and his soon-to-be ex-wife and two children. 
He had a pool table and I would go over to his house and smoke some cigars and drinks, and we'd play pool together. About two months after Cody moved in, we soon realized that his marriage was in trouble and his wife wanted a divorce. He tried to reconcile and it turns out that his wife was already having an affair with someone at her job. Cody and his son and daughter took it really hard because they felt like his wife abandoned them. Me and my wife would do the best we could to be there for them. Unbeknownst to me, my wife went too far to cheer them up. My wife started cooking more than we needed so she could share with Cody and his two children. His son also started attending the local community college so he would come back and spend hours at my house tutoring my kids. He seemed like a nice kid, so we became really close, almost like they lost their wife and mother. After Cody's wife moved out from his house and moved in with the other man, that was when my wife began to change, and I blame myself for not suspecting anything because it was obvious in hindsight. One time we were planning on visiting Cody's house. My wife went to his house wearing a shorter-than-usual skirt, and I noticed that she wasn't wearing anything underneath it. When I noticed it, I wanted to say something about it, and it slipped my mind. When we went back home, I remembered and asked her why, and she was dismissive, saying that she forgot. I will never forget that day, because her response didn't seem right to me. I didn't suspect anything was going on with her and Cody, because I was with Cody the entire time. I should also state that it was her idea to be cooking extra for them occasionally. I thought it was supposed to be a temporary thing. However, my spouse persisted in doing so until D-Day. The fact that Cody works at least 12 hours a day and spends at least 15 hours outside of his home further contributed to my lack of suspicion. He wakes up two hours later than I do and departs for work at the same time. We only see each other on Saturdays and Sundays while we are drinking on our balcony in the evenings. Now back to the day the plumber unclogged condoms that was blocking my drain pipe and wife reacted strangely. I remember having a dream some days later that my wife was having an affair. I don't remember who she was having an affair with. But when I woke up, all I remember was that she was having an affair in my dream. After our third child was born, she became a stay-at-home mom. Although she had a little online gig here and there to make some cash, I was the primary breadwinner. I have never bothered myself with what she was doing when she was alone at home. And my kids are in school. But it all changed after the condom incident. And the dream. It was like the universe was drawing my attention to something. My mind keeps going through a list of people she might be having an affair with. Maybe in her yoga class. Or her gym class. She didn't used to be a gym person. Now she goes all the time, but I couldn't figure out who her affair partner was. I followed her to the gym and I didn't suspect anyone. Cody doesn't have time to go to the gym or do anything else but work. Sometimes she goes to the gym with Cody's 19-year-old son and 16-year-old daughter. So I figured she wouldn't have an affair or meet anyone when she's with them. My mindset at the time was that the condom was thrown in my toilet, so she must be inviting the person in my bedroom. The thought of that just made me sick to my stomach, so much so that I tried to dismiss it. Back then, I should have installed a camera in my bedroom or my house, but it never occurred to me till later. Two days after the condom incident, I noticed that me and my wife were growing distant every week. We would go a week without getting intimate. And when I tried to initiate, she would say that she was tired. Tired of what? Being home all day. Then she started blaming me for gaining too much weight. She wanted me to start working out and get in shape so I could become more attractive. She complained that I should stop drinking and start working out. I took her words seriously because I was desperately looking for a solution to fix our relationship. I thought maybe the reason why we were growing distant is because she was working out and losing weight and I'm going the opposite direction. When I look at myself in the mirror, I felt like she was right. So I decided to cut my drinking and start doing morning workouts like push-ups and etc. and a few home exercises before I take a shower for work in the morning. Someday, rather than heading to the guest bedroom as usual after getting up early in the morning, I chose to perform some push-ups next to my bed. I saw something under the bed that looked like shiny plastic when I was performing the push-up. The door was ajar and the room remained dark. Thus, light was entering the bedroom from the corridor. When I completed my push-up, I reached out to grab what I thought was trash, wrappings underneath my bed so I can throw it away. When I picked it up, it turned out to be a condom wrapper. That was when it became clear to me what was going on. My wife is bringing another man in my bedroom and getting intimate with him. I look at my wife as she was still sleeping. I went to the hallway to get a better look at what was clearly a Trojan condom wrapper. I was angry because I understood what that meant. 
I wanted to grab her and demand answers to how and why the plumber found hundreds of condoms in my drain, and now condom wrapper was under my bed. I was angry and emasculated and afraid. Afraid of my future. Afraid of what I will find out. Afraid of the woman that I have loved for almost half of my life. I had no choice but to order a hidden camera and install it in my bedroom and living room. I installed the camera and connected it to my Wi-Fi so I can watch and record live feeds on my cell phone. I went to work the following day. When I parked my car at the work parking lot, I turned on the camera just to check because I have been thinking about it. And to my surprise, I saw my wife with somebody on our bed. It didn't even take 40 minutes after I left the house for her to bring somebody in our house and start getting intimate on our bed. I had it open on my phone. Even though the room's light was still off, I was still able to identify the person based on their body language and movement. It was the 19-year-old son of my neighbor. I had eyes I couldn't believe. I quickly shifted into reverse in the hopes of catching them in the act. I returned home by car. In order to avoid making any noise, I parked my car on the street when I got there. Parking in the driveway and I opened the front door quietly. I slowly walked to the bedroom and caught both of them sleeping on our bed. There were two unused condoms on my nightstand and one used condom on my bed. So that was why she was doing so many laundry and chores lately, to clean up the evidence of her affair. While I was at work, his shirt and pants were on the floor as well. I had anger issues in the past and it all came back in force. I was enraged and I lost it. I immediately yanked him out of the bed and started punching him in the face. My wife kept screaming, trying to stop me, begging me. After I punched him all the way out of my front door, I turned to my wife and told her to pack her things and move out before I came back from work. Like I said earlier, I had anger issues in the past, and the way I deal with it is avoidance because I would have strangled her if I had stayed a few seconds in my house. I entered into my car and drove off to nowhere. I just knew that I needed to put some distance away from me and my wayward wife. My phone started blowing up. First my wife, then my co-workers. I didn't feel like talking to anyone. Then I parked my car somewhere and cried my eyes out. I called my boss and told him that I have a family emergency. Then I called Cody and told him what happened. He was angry with his son and apologized to me. Since I don't have any family close by, I called my wife's dad because I was close to her parents and I told them what my wife had done. Throughout the day, my wife tried to reach me, but I didn't answer. I came back in the evening when I was calm. Cody was in my house when I came home. My wife was on the couch crying and shaking. Her parents came back earlier. It happens that way to a lot of people. I have met a lot of people who have lost intercourse. At that point, I became quite upset with her. My ex-bro sounds like he was having an affair or something. So I didn't have the strength to talk. I changed my clothes, took a shower, and took some sleeping pill. Then I went to my children's room and fell asleep. I know myself well enough that I don't act logically when I'm in an emotional roller coaster. I woke up the following day with a clear mind. I had this overwhelming feeling of sadness and shame like part of me had died. I didn't say a word to my wayward wife. She didn't get any sleep the night before. She still sat in the living room and knew me well enough not to speak to me. When I went to work that day, I searched for a divorce lawyer. I know a divorce would cost me almost half of my asset, and I will pay alimony because my soon-to-be ex-wife had been unemployed for more than 10 years, and infidelity doesn't have any impact in divorce settlement in my state. I scheduled an appointment with a divorce lawyer two days later. My wife would be moving in with her parents till she sorts out her living arrangement, because we agreed that it's best she move out. As for Cody's son, he kicked him out of the house. At least that's what he told me. But I suspect that he may be staying with his mom. I am only 35 years old, and I'm making good income. A few months earlier, I thought my family was perfect. I had three beautiful children, a wife that I thought was loyal, and two rental properties and a primary resident. And I planned to build wealth and enjoy with my kids and my beautiful wife. Now, after the divorce, the life of my children will be disrupted. I have to divide my assets and end up like Cody. Her excuse for cheating is that she was feeling sorry for Cody's son and they got close and he was giving her compliments and that was how it started. She had been having an affair with Cody's son for about seven months, it turned out. Our lawyers and I are still hammering out the specifics of the divorce settlement. To make matters worse, I am also covering her legal fees. If my toilet wasn't clogged, I suppose. I doubt that I would have discovered my wife's affair with a neighbor's 19-year-old son, which had been preventing me from having sex with her. What's your opinion about OP? Thanks for joining us in our stories where revenge is served hot. Please consider subscribing to our channel to ensure your next chef remains loyal. Tune in for the next one to get your revenge appetite fulfilled. 
If you're below 18, hold on, it's not for the faint-hearted.